In this video, we introduce the subtopic of geometric transformations, which is part of the AI HL only course in topic three, geometry and trigonometry. Now, geometric transformations is all about the movement or the transformation of points on a 2D plane to some sort of final position. So let's look at, at this Cartesian plane here. We have three points, A, B, and C, and actually constructs a triangle. But let's focus on point C, which has the coordinates 1, 3. We can transform point C, and in the AI HL course, there are four types of transformations, reflections, stretches or enlargements, rotations and translations. And if the transformation involves more than one of these, and that's called a composite transformation, we can transform point C to some other final position. So let's say it finishes down here. We would notate that as C dash. And the correct way to describe this final position is actually the image of point C. Now, if these points here make up a shape, which will be common in an IB exam question involving geometric transformations, so in this case here we have three points, A, B, and C, that construct a triangle. If all three points undergo the same transformation, which is the case in this question here, we have the transformation matrices here, A and B, which I'll talk about in a second. Then if all three points are transformed, then the whole triangle, the whole shape is transformed to its image. And in this case here, I have the solution just here. So we have our original triangle ABC. It undergoes a transformation, or all three vertices undergo a transformation to create its image here, A dash, B dash, C dash. So that's what geometric transformations is all about. It's just the movement of points and shapes on a 2D plane. Okay, let's look at the general form of a geometric transformation. We have the matrix equation here, and underneath it, it's the same equation, but just in vector component form. Now it reads, let's say we have a starting point, lowercase x here, just like we had C. So this, this could just be a coordinates like four, five, or negative three, six. Its image, x dash, is going to be equal to a transformation matrix A, pre-multiplied by the starting position plus another transformation matrix B. Now the transformation matrix A is a two by two matrix and we denote that as A, B, C, D. And it involves the first three transformations I have listed here, reflections, stretches and enlargements and rotations. The second transformation matrix B is actually called a vector translation and we denote that as EF, and that just involves the fourth types of transformation, uh, which is called a translation. Okay, let's now visualize these four types of transformations. I'll go through them one by one. Let's look at reflections first. So let's say I have a, a, a Cartesian plane here, just in the first quadrant, so x, y. Let's say I have a starting position, say, I'll call this, I'll call this A. And let's say it is reflected in the line y equals x. So this line here, y equals x. Then its image is just going to be a mirror image on that line. So its final position here, its image, a dash, is going to look like that. Or it could be reflected, say, in the y-axis. Then its reflection, its mirror image, would be over here. And this would be a dash. So that's what reflections are all about. Now the second type of transformation, stretches and enlargements, usually these involve shapes. Stretching points isn't quite, it, it, it is not overly intuitive and, and not all that useful. So this mostly involves shapes, just like this triangle down here. So let's say I had a shape here, let's say I had it just at a square that looked like this. And let's say it is stretched both vertically and horizontally in the positive direction. Then its image might look something like this. Uh, I'll just choose a different color, let's choose it red. It might look something like this. And let's say it had a scale factor of two, which meant that it doubled in size. Now, if the scale factor is the same, both in the horizontal and a vertical direction, then that's called an enlargement. So stretches, it sort of stretches the shape, either, it, either the shape gets bigger or it gets smaller. But important concept here is the stretch and enlargement is centered at the origin. So you can see here this square, didn't center at the center, sorry, it didn't, didn't stretch at the center of the square. It actually stretched in accordance to the origin. Okay, rotations now. Let's say I have this starting point A again, somewhere here. And let's say this point A here rotates 
in an anti-clockwise direction centered about the origin by say 60 degrees. Well, I'm just gonna draw a vector from the origin out to A and I'm going to draw an angle of 60 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. Then its image is going to be, it's gonna look something like this, A dash. Now we can either rotate points in a anti-clockwise direction or a clockwise direction. But the point here is that it rotates around the origin. And finally, translations, probably the easiest. Let's say I have a starting point here, we'll call it A again. Translation is just moving these points either horizontally or vertically. So let's say it starts here. Let's say it translates a few units in the positive X direction. It might go to here, and let's say it also translates a few units in the, uh, let's say, negative y direction down here. Then its finishing point, its image A dash will be down here. So translation is just a movement of the points, either horizontally or vertically. Now, some of the harder IB exam questions in this subtopic will ask you to actually create the transformation matrix. And in order to do that, these formulas given to us in the formula booklet are very useful. I won't go through them all now because it takes quite a bit of time to sort of understand the theory underneath each one. So I recommend practicing some of these questions in the question bank. But the point here is that we have formulas here to help us create either the transformation matrix A or the vector translation um, B. Okay, let's now talk about this example in the bottom right that, that is from the question bank section. We're transforming this triangle to its image. I'll just talk through how to do this and I'll just transform one of the vertices and then, you can, and then you can use that type of thinking to then transform the other two vertices to therefore transform the whole triangle. So I'm gonna transform point C here. It is transformed according to this geometric transformation. So the final position is equal to the transformation matrix A, which we have, pre-multiplied to the starting position, which in our case here is one, three, plus the translation vector V. So to find the image of C, we would go, well, C dash is equal to the transformation matrix A, so negative one, two, negative two, one, pre-multiplied by the starting position, which was one, three, plus the translation vector negative six, three. Now, we, and we can now either solve this by hand or using our calculator. I'll just use my calculator for this one. So there we go, I just entered that there, hit enter, and I get negative one, four. So that's the coordinates of the image C dash, and you can see uh, that is C dash there, negative one, four. And we can do that for all three points. That creates the vertices of the image. We can connect the dots and there we have it, the image of the triangle. Now there's one final concept I want to touch on now, which is this formula that I have written here. It's not in the AI formula booklet, so it's one to remember. It's a pretty simple one. It's how do we find the area of the image? So for example, the area of this red triangle given an area for the starting triangle and the transformation that it undergoes. And the formula is the new area, in other words, the area of the image, is equal to the absolute value of the determinant of A, where A is the transformation matrix, multiplied by the old area. So for example, let's say the area of the starting triangle ABC, I'm not exactly sure what the area is, but let's say it's, it looks like it's about one, two, three, four, five, it looks like it's about 10 units squared, let's just say. So area equals 10, I'll just call it unit squared. Then the area of the image is going to be equal to the determinant of A, so let's just write this out, so the area of the image, I'll call it area dash, is going to be the determinant of this matrix, and just to recap, to, def to find the determinant of a two by two is A times D subtract B times C, so negative one times one, which is negative one, subtract two times negative two, in other words, negative one plus four, which is going to be three, multiplied by the old area, which is 10. Now the absolute value of three is just three. If it, if it comes out, if the determinant comes out negative, then we just take the magnitude of the number, or in other words, flip it to a positive. So therefore the area of this image is going to be 30 units squared.
Okay, there we have it. There was a quick introduction to geometric transformations. We covered what a geometric transformation is, the general form of a geometric transformation. The two important components here are the transformation matrix A and the translation vector B. We looked at the formulas and then we, and then we went through how do we find the area of the image if we know the area of the starting shape. Okay, I now recommend practicing some of these questions in the question bank. Good luck.